It's Kurt Angle revealing on his podcast that he is dealing with memory issues. I'll give you the quote. I would say I probably had four concussions that I know of, major ones. One was a slight concussion that wasn't too bad. The other three were pretty bad. But you know, even to this day, I'm starting to not remember things. You know, I'm only in my early 50s, but I've gotten a little damage to my brain. There's no doubt about it. You know, my memory is not that great anymore. I really have to think hard about remembering the past. And that's pretty terrifying. I, I, I know this isn't... Uh, it's sort of the same thing. I saw a ESPN 30 for 30 about the Chicago Bears, and is it Jim McMahon, uh, mm-hmm. who was the quarterback at the time, and he was talking about how it wasn't so much the head trauma, or it was the head trauma, but it was the neck trauma that came along with it as well that ended up sort of reducing blood flow to his brain and that kind of thing, and early onset dementia with just head blows. Uh, but yeah, your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> I'm not doubting what Kurt said at all. And when you get those con- concussions, because when you step in that ring, and I-, I was thinking, how many times have I been hit in the head? Even by a working punch. You know, if you took your, your finger and just thumped yourself on the head 50 times a day or whatever, after a while, it would cause some damage. Not counting the suplex you take and all this other stuff that snaps your neck. Because, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a problem. And Kurt was in so much pain at one time, because I was with him in TNA, he told me that when he woke up in the morning, now some people will find this hard to believe, and I, I found it hard to believe too. And then people that have gone through it too, they said, no, that's not hard to believe. He told me he took 10 Percocets to start the day. 10. Now, if I took 10, I'd, you'd have to call the hospital for me. I'd just be all, I'd be all over the place. But he said that was 10 just to get going for the day. And I and no telling how many else he took. So, of course, he developed an addiction that I think he had to have treatment for. But what he's saying here is, yeah, it's a brain trauma, head trauma, getting knocked out in football and, and, and wrestling. It does have its drawbacks. And, <clears throat> and sometimes I have trouble remembering. I have trouble remembering things on this show sometimes. Remember when I'm going, hey, what's the guy's name? You know, I, I just forgot a while ago. We, just, we were just talking about it. But I don't know if that's from taking the shots in the head or, or whatever. But I, I, I think most old-time wrestlers do have a little bit of a memory problems. They've um, even tried to stop uh, in training work <coughs> in football, our football, uh, heading the ball. Because even though it's relatively low impact, you do it so many times that they all end up being sort of like micro traumas or micro concussions almost. And a lot of footballers are developing dementia or memory problems uh, compared to people who, you know, compared to the masses in general. So even small knocks can accumulate over time. Well, that's why they came out with a targeting rule in pro football, NFL. And the targeting is you're leading with your head onto a runner. And they're saying the runner is kind of defenseless. If he's, he's been hit, he stopped, and, and you come in and hit him. And you can be actually ejected from the game, and you miss, you miss the first half of the next game. They are trying to stop that head trauma. And there's a lot of guys in NFL football. You can't even talk to him. Mike Tyson says he's, he just loses complete control of what he's saying sometimes. said he's been hit so many times. Muhammad Ali, I read the other day, he's been hit in the head 100,000 times. And, and that's only in 30 fights, or for maybe 40 fights. Well, it's not counting his amateur background. Or well, sparring, but, of course. Yeah, and you get tagged in that too. I don't know how I don't know how guys can can do that, but my best wishes go out go out to anybody who has brain damage from getting from football, from wrestling, from boxing, anything. Uh, just uh, one more mention of Kurt is when you were in TNA. I don't know if you ever went up to him or anybody else you know went up to him and just said, "Slow down. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do whatever you're planning. Some whatever crazy move that." that it would, may endanger his health. And he probably did endanger his health on quite a lot of them as well. Well, you couldn't tell Kurt not to do it. You could tell him, but unless the boss of the company told him, 
And he wouldn't even listen to that. Dixie Carter was the owner and even, and, and Jeff Jarrett was the co-owner. They could go up to him and tell him, don't do this. And he didn't listen to them because he actually thought of, thought of himself as above them. He was Kurt Angle. He'd been in WWF, WWE. Now he's down in TNA. And you, you want to know how I knew that Kurt's drug addiction was really severe? When they released him, they released him cleanly. They didn't have no 90-day, no compete clause or nothing. This is this is they being WWE. WWE, they released him when they said you can go, he could go and work for whoever that day. And they they said you you you're gone. One reason I heard they uh, they were afraid he was going to die while he was on WWE payroll. Now, of course I heard that. I don't know if it's true. But they don't need that negative publicity after, you know, the drug scandals they've had before. And I think this was when Vince was trying to trying to sign some new TV deals and he didn't need that negative publicity, but I did hear they wanted to get rid of him as fast as they could because they knew he had a severe problem and they was afraid he's either going to die. He was going to overdose or some bad news could come out of his drug use. Uh, I've had probably about four or five concussions. Uh, nothing as major as this, but uh, I'm presuming you've had far worse than I've had as well. What was the worst? You, you, you used to call it getting your bell rung, but uh, what were the symptoms of your worst head injury? Well, I, I, I'm kind of lucky. I've, I've been knocked out. I've been knocked out by a punch on the street. Been knocked out by football. A guy, he targeted me right in the head. Out I went. Um, but usually I, I got knocked out one time in Savannah, Georgia, and I was working with this guy and our heads collided. He took a step in with both throwing a punch instead of our punches colliding, our heads collided, bam, we both went down. We knocked each other out. And when I came back, I did not know where I was. I was just in a well lit spot with a bright light over top of me. I didn't know I was in a wrestling match. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what I was doing. And I went back in time to when I was about seven years old and I was walking over a little, this is crazy. I was walking over a little trail to my grandmother's house and I could feel this. And it was like early June. I could actually, even, and I could hear the birds chirping in the tree line and, and the bugs flying around, and I could feel the sun on my arms. Crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. But I felt all that, and then come to, and I said, well, I'll be damned. I'm in Savannah, Georgia, in the middle of a, <laughs> in the middle of a ring uh, in a wrestling match. Then I realized, but, but it's hard to tell how long you're out. You know, what might be a second to me could be 30 seconds, or what seemed like 30 seconds could be, only be two. But... That's probably the worst experience I've ever had being knocked out. Yeah.